everyone and welcome back to Funeral DNA, the podcast where we analyze the unique components, trends, innovations, and services that make up the funeral industry, or as we call it, Funeral DNA. I'm Mike Davis. And I'm Ashley Salomon. So welcome everybody back to our show. Today we have Steve Tamblin on. He is the owner of Life Expressions. So thank you, Steve, for uh, stopping in today. Oh, thank you guys for having me. So, Steve, we like to usually start this off. Uh, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself and your background and really how long have you been in the funeral industry? I, I got in the funeral industry in 2009. Uh, my dad passed away um, and felt that, okay, we spent about $9,000 on a funeral and we walked out with nothing. So I don't know if it's my generation, Generation X, where we felt like we needed to take something, um, at least have something something to leave with. Um, so I felt kind of like something was left behind. Uh, and then so I uh, helped with I, other partners in the past, helped create a company um, that does fingerprint jury and started that in 2009. So then since then, I've then um, branched off and went into Life Expressions and branched off into the UK, the United States, and Canada. So we've kind of spread our wings a bit and offered uh, keepsake memorial jewelry and to a range of right from jewelry right through to urns now. So we, we, we kind of spread our wings and do a lot of, of just memorial items. Um, and we concentrate on celebrating the celebration of life rather than just the, the deceased portion. So we do a lot of photos, a lot of things on urns, a lot of acrylic blocks with photos, more about the memories than we are about anything else. That sounds lovely. So you sort of explained what your motivation was to get involved into this industry already, um, but what were operations like for Life Expressions in the early days and um, your expansion, you've mentioned urns as well. What, what is that sort of timeline? Well, so the early days, it was kind of, I had a lot of people say to me, um, so what do you do for a living? And I'd say, well, this is what I do. And they'd say, so you do it, you make enough money to survive? I was like, yes, just because it was new didn't mean like, so it was that thing that, that it wasn't common. Um, it wasn't every funeral, like you would, I would talk to funeral homeowners and they would go, you do what? Why would we want that? Um, so it, it kind of, in the, the, the beginning stage, there was a lot of knocking on doors, uh, a lot of, are you crazy? Um, uh, a lot of, you know, kind of things like that, that a lot of no's to eventually that they, it started to, you know, take root, especially in Canada, as it started to take root, people, people started to take notice and thinking, yeah, you know, um, the families are enjoying the, with the fingerprint, they can feel our product. So when it's presented to the family and they're at the funeral, they, if they're wearing a pennant, they spend the whole time rubbing that fingerprint. Uh, so the funeral directors then could actually see there's a connection. Okay, they actually, there's a, it's not just a, a pennant you'd buy from a jewelry store that's a birthday present or a Christmas present from somebody. It's actually their loved one's fingerprint. Um, so there was, a, there was a stronger connection than they realized. Um, at that stage, that's when it started to take off. Um, and in the last four years, we've done a lot of expansion into other products um, to be able to personalize anything. Uh, we've had people send us rocks from their, their cottage that we've put dad's picture on, uh, full color photo on a rock, just because they, it's from their cottage. And that's where they remember their dad being, and it's a picture of them on the dock. Um, to the urns that uh, we do, we do a lot of urns that are full color. Uh, the niche that we do, a lot of it's a shape of a, an old album. So if somebody was really into music, we can make the cover of their urn look like an album cover. Um, 
so it's completely different things we've gone into instead of just these concentrating on just the fingerprint jury uh, because I found uh, with my family is a good example. Um, my sister, ah, she was okay with it. Um, my mom liked the blown glass stuff we do. My brother wanted nothing until we had a flask. And once I had a flask and a shot glass, we put my dad's fingerprint on, he was all over. So we found that everybody doesn't want the same thing. Um, so as we expanded the line, we really found the interest in growing to our teddy bears that for kids with the, the fingerprints on the paws and special messages on the other paw, uh, it kind of really just took on a life of its own. Um, so we had more and more funeral directors. Basically, our line cre is created by funeral directors. So we had a funeral director from out east that said, we need about 200 guitar picks and we want the fingerprint on them. And we were like, oh, we've never done guitar picks. And so she said, well, uh, we've got a week. And I said, okay. So uh, we started doing guitar picks. Uh, now we do guitar picks every day. <laughs> so, um, so it's something like that, that we get products that are inexpensive um, to the funeral home, say a dozen guitar picks for $15, $16 to uh, a gold cremation pendant that's going to be close to seven or $800 to the funeral. So we got that range that there's really no family member that can't buy something. So despite whether their income level is high or low, we want to be able to service everybody. So back to your question, as we, as we grew, um, we started to expand into more lines, more items, um, spread our um, product line to a wider range of people. And to, we also expanded our cost of goods. So, you know, to a lower end, something, you know, under in that $20 range to the funeral home to, you know, in the $800 range. So we expanded that too, to, to make sure that any family member coming into the funeral home could get something. If they wanted something, they could buy it. So, you know, like somebody will come up with $50 or $20 or $40 or something. So we really expanded the line that way in the last four years. Um, four years ago, we went into the UK. Um, so... We started, we started in there with a uh, David who's fantastic um, and he's our partner over there and he services well over a thousand, uh, 1200 funeral homes over there, uh, rooftops. Um, so it's, it's just expanded really nicely over there. Now it was a little newer over there than it was here by then um, because they, they just didn't have the access or they didn't have anybody that took it on. Um, in North America, we were kind of fortunate that Thummies was the original. They're the grandfather. Uh, they have a very unique, different product than ours. Uh, but they were the first 25 years ago to, to bring out a fingerprint jewelry. Um, so, you know, and that there's, you know, you know, probably 15 different competitors in the U.S. now alone. So right from them starting it. So so it was definitely a concept that, that was created. But um is what we ended up doing is changing the timeline. So we get our stuff shipped out within 24 hours. So if you order, it's gonna be there for the funeral. So if the family wants to wear it for the funeral, it, they will have it for the funeral. Our urns, our jewelry, everything. So we've kind of changed that the timeline on the product from three to four weeks to six weeks is what their timeline is to ours is 24 to 48 hours. So we've kind of altered that, which is, which is I think the families are, uh, much happier with um, because the time they really want that product and helps them grieve through the process and makes them feel closer to their loved one is that initial three weeks of somebody passing. So they want to have that closeness and they want to have that feeling. Um, so that's what we do. Absolutely. And so to allow you to provide families with that wide range of personalized items, is there any like advances in technology that have really allowed that, like in order to inscribe those, th those thumbprints or, or their unique signatures or anything like that? Yeah, well, is what we end up doing is, is researching the, the machinery. Like four years ago is what we really spent a lot of time on, um, almost five years ago now, five years ago, really researched on the the machinery so we can we can do a golf ball and we do a lot of golf balls with photos on them um so we do hockey pucks and we want to be able to do full color prints on those and full color prints on urns 
Um, so that's, that's one of the things is the technology in the last probably seven or eight years to be able to print on something without doing traditionally before is what you to do. A, uh, I'll just use golf balls. For example, you used to have to do a silk screen on them. So you'd have to do a print for every color, very time consuming, uh, very labor intensive, uh, and wasn't cost effective to do anything unless you were buying thousands of balls. Um, we're now with, with the new technology, we can do a dozen balls and have it worthwhile. And so the family can have them um, for like, there's people that buy six or seven dozen and they'll give one to everybody that comes to the funeral. So those items, that items has made us or been able to, uh, to uh, expand our line with technology and equipment and machinery. None of it's cheap, but it, it does offer a product that we can, we can definitely expand. And I think that the families that get those odd products um, like our teddy bears and those things, they really appreciate them because they can't get them anywhere. Um, you know, it's just, it, they hold it dear to their heart. Well, I, I think uh, coming from a sales background, the idea that you have of getting that product to the clients as fast as possible so it can be there uh, in their darkest hour and their most meaningful moments of grieving through the process, um, that definitely sounds like it gives yourself a competitive edge. Uh, but going back, looking over the last year, um, I know COVID-19 and the pandemic has really changed everything. Has that affected your company with your supply chains, uh, perhaps shipping and getting the items to the people in their time? Um, yeah, how has that affected you guys? Well, it's funny, it's COVID hit and it was like in March, pretty much around the world. So we were in the US and the UK and Ireland and Scotland, uh, France, Germany, and Netherlands. And it all, everything just kind of, everybody froze. And it was about two weeks of just complete, like people froze. They had no idea what was going to happen, what was going to, what was going to occur. Um, then after that, they were like, all right, it's going to be business as normal. We're going to try to do business as normal, but you're right. The supply chain was difficult for anything coming in because of the fact is that our suppliers, our jewelry suppliers, now majority of our stuff is purchased in North America. So we were benefit. We benefited that way rather than some companies that were purchasing a lot of stuff from China or anything else. Uh, like all our silver, our gold, everything comes from North America, chains and everything. So, but the problem, the problem occurred when, um, they got shut down for COVID. So they would get shut down and they would be down for two weeks for quarantine. And then their whole production line would back up. So we found that we had to change our ordering style. Um, so when they were working, we had to order more to make sure we had what we needed. Um, so that was the initial six months of learning curve of thinking, okay, well, how do we predict now? Because we don't know if somebody's gonna get, they could like, we had one supplier that was down for two and a half weeks and then literally up for two days and then down again for two weeks. So they were down for a month and a half, uh, pretty much with two days in between or that were, you know, so obviously they didn't get much accomplished in two days, but so we had to learn how to, how to purchase and how to buy to make sure we could service our customers. Um, shipping was another thing that was just a worldwide um, was crazy. Um, it didn't matter where we were going, there were shipping problems, delays and everything else. Um, from sheer the volume of people ordering online um, the couriers just could not keep up um, it's and they couldn't hire they couldn't hire enough people uh, with vehicles and everything else that they just couldn't pick up and deliver it fast enough their depots couldn't handle the flow um, like even our I, I am in a small community and our increase was about 60 percent to our drivers what was coming in so you figure if that a depot that is in a major uh, metropolitan area like Toronto uh, and their depot has, you know, 60% more packages that they had, they're not equipped to handle that in sorting and everything else. So that was a bit of a, uh, a bit of a struggle. Now, the only, uh, the upside to it is that everybody was in the same boat. So the, our customer, was understanding because they were in the same boat. Their customer was understanding because they're in the same boat because they're basically locked out at home at this point. Um, so they understood that there was the COVID issues. Um, for our business directly, we had an increase uh, for the sake of that people couldn't do a lot of the stuff they wanted to do. They couldn't have the, the visitations. They couldn't have the car service. They couldn't have the, the graveside service. Um, those things caused them to you know, to say, okay, well, we want something we need. Same thing I was saying, 
they were saying, they were saying, we need something, we need something. So we could, we ended up, we did have an increase and more customers coming on and more customers buying. Um, I find that the average, average family now is buying more pieces than they were in the past um, because they're still locked down. I'm not sure if we're going to ever go back to hundred percent of what we did. Um, I think the online and everything else. Now we have a complete online store um, and is what, the other thing that's really helped is that we we increased our line store that they could the families now could buy right from our store, so it's like they're going through the funeral home, but they have to log in. They log in through a, a their reference number, which is actually um, their special code for their fingerprint from their funeral home. So it's like they're buying from the funeral home, but they're buying completely online. They can get it shipped right to their home. They don't have to leave their house if they don't want to. So we found that really increased is the and just you know the families that were calling in directly we found that is really increased because they'll be online looking at ordering and they'll just call us directly uh, and so we found that increased because the fact is the families now are home and they aren't at the funeral home so traditionally what they would ask the funeral director they were at home and they were like okay well i'll just call them directly so we found that increased so caused you know it was more staffing and everything else that we we required but um you know the thing is we're here to service them so that's what we did but it was definitely an interesting time with 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 shipping was our most difficult um even over over our supply chain the shipping part was our most in the last year and a half was our hardest hurdle our hardest hurdle to, to jump um, just because the fact is there was no Traditionally, you'd be next day service, and we would hope for that. And in two days would be great, and three days would be good. And but we didn't. Uh, if it was somebody rule, it could be four or five. And uh, in from our model, um, you know, we we guarantee we're going to ship it within four, 24 or forty eight hours. But uh, two years ago, that would get to them in forty eight hours. So if we shipped it out, they would get it 40 hours anywhere in North America, um, you know, and then anywhere in the, the EU would be two days max. Well, there's times now to Europe, we're talking five, six days. So it's completely changed the whole uh, aspect of, of how we do our business and what we do. our customers are telling their customers. Um, but everybody has been very understanding. Our customers have been amazing. And their customers have been amazing as well, just because the fact is we're all in this thing. Everybody's in the same boat. So it's kind of that aspect that there's nothing we can, you know, there's nothing we can do. We can't move them faster. Um, they understand that. So it's been, it's been definitely a learning curve. Um, we've had to pivot a few things. Um, we've created, we've been asked for more things than we've ever have, more unique and customized pieces, uh, like hammers, uh, you know, the, the butt of a gun, they've shipped us just the end, end part of the, the butt of the gun to do fingerprints on and signatures, uh, laser photos in them. Uh, so we've done a lot of unique and different things in the last year and a half. I think because people are thinking that because they couldn't do what they wanted to do, they want to celebrate, uh, have a celebration of life with something different. Um, so with our niches, the one behind me, um, with doing it in full color and an album cover type of thing has been popular. Um, the teddy bears been popular, so they just want to do something different. Um, so we finally were able to, to pivot a bit and help those families that uh, just weren't sure what they wanted, but really wanted to do something. So, yeah. Um, so clearly then, you know, there's obviously the trend of the shipping problem happening with COVID. And I think that that's still, although we see it with business, it's getting a little bit better. It's still there and there's still quite a few delays. Um, and aside from the direct, like the consumers going directly to you, is there any specific products or specific uh, memorial pieces that are becoming more trendy that you're seeing more and more popular aside from those one-off unique ones? Well, the, 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 the teddy bear we have has become huge. Like in the last year and a half, um, it's just been massive. I, I, I don't know why. Uh, for some reason, it's just been a very popular piece. Um, so the other thing that we've been done, we've done a lot of is pets, um, which is very unique because the fact is we've been asked by a lot of funeral homes to do uh, pet paws. Uh, we've been approached by a lot of pet cremation places. Um, and there's, a, a, there's been a large trend um, of... Of, of pet people asking for stuff. Uh, so we've been doing a lot of that. 
um, which is kind of, you know, in the last, especially in the last year, I don't know if it's because people are home more with their pet. If they pass away, there's a stronger bond uh, or people, more people are getting pets because we're getting, we're getting requests for people that haven't lost their pet. We're getting requests for, for dog bowls and things like that with their dog's name on them and their paw print and everything else for their pets that are living. Um, so it's kind of one of those unique things that was, that's taken us by kind of by surprise. Well, Creative Minds just going here, you had the idea of the, the album cover. I thought that that was super neat. Um, somebody like my dad, I grew up, he introduced me to a whole lot of different bands, a lot of the old people. Um, have you considered putting one of those Spotify codes on one of those album covers so that somebody could scan it with their phone and then have a song play uh, that would remind them of that? Or is this a new idea that I could just feed you? That's, that's a great idea. I like that. <laughs> yeah, it, it just popped in. I've seen a few yeah. frameworks that people are doing. They put that little Spotify code, and then when they scan it with their phone, uh, with the app, all of a sudden that song pops up and it starts playing. So um, there, maybe maybe that might be your next big seller on your uh, on your website. There, yeah. I could actually look into that because uh, except for next a year from now, you're going to be calling me back and saying, "Steve, you owe me you owe me copyrights on that." That was my idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve. Well, you know, it's been really, really great talking to you here. Uh, what do you think are uh, the next steps or the, you know, the changes that are coming on the horizon for Life Expressions? Well, we're expanding our earned line uh, quite drastically, actually. Um, and with the earned line that we, we're expanding into, we're going from the same idea as our normal line. So going from the, the families that, you know, just say, you know, because we, every, every director gets them, is that dad wanted me to spend nothing. So pine box, I don't care. That's all we want. So we're going from that inexpensive urn right to the, the higher end solid oaks and everything else. So we're kind of doing the same thing in the urn line, but we're going to um, be able to personalize because personalization is our big thing. That's what we do. So we'll be able to personalize them with full color and lasering and laser photos and everything rather than just basic urn. Like well, I know when my dad passed, we had a wood urn and that was it. There was no name on it, no dates, no nothing. Um, and it would have been nice to have a little personalization to it at the service. Um, so that get, it's a whole other aspect of it uh, for us to do urns, um, a few new equipment, a little bit of new equipment and everything else to do them. Um, but that's our big thing in the next year is we're gonna concentrate on doing the urns uh, and doing them well um, and giving that range of products to the family that whether they're, they want to spend, you know, $150, $200, if the family wants to spend only $150, $200 for an urn, or they're okay with spending seven or $800, uh, we'll be able to have that range of products for them. Um, and that's our big, that's our big launch the next year. Um, where we are launching um, now into a few other countries uh, in the EU at the same time. So yeah, so there's quite a, it's been interesting, the, the COVID has, as we're kind of in lockdown, I guess like your creative mind was just going, that's kind of what's happened to us is that it's okay, we haven't had that, you know, you're not, we're not going to trade shows, we're not, we're not getting the interaction with the people that we normally would to say things like that. Like you just said, Michael, here's an idea, what do you ever thought of this? Um, so we've kind of had to kind of sit back and think, okay, have brainstorming and other ideas. Um, and that's come with the album cover with the niche, you know, that kind of aspect. Um, so we've, we've, we've come up with a few more ideas, um, the urns were one of them, and how to do them differently than traditional. Because I, I, as I said, I, we're a strong believer in the celebration of life and helping that family celebrate the good times and everything else. And, you know, it's kind of like, I keep on going back to your idea because I really like it. <laughs> It's, uh, it's a good idea because I know there's certain songs that you know, I know if I had my dad's urn on my mantle and that was on there, uh, there's certain songs that I would, it would just be neat to be able to go up and say, yeah, and they all come back to me, all those, because the fa fact is that the things that we have, and that's why we like doing so many pictures, because that visual, the visual reminder is a celebration of life. If the, in the you know, the fingerprint is remembering that person, but if you see something visual or a smell, you will automatically go back to that moment where that was song was playing or, you know, that smell was there, like grandma's apple pie kind of aspect. Um, so there's other aspects that we have, we're, we're looking into too is using actual, uh, you know, cause we can, we can actually now embroider uh, signatures and fingerprints on clothing. 
um, so we can make pillows and things like that out of that person's like a shirt or a sweatshirt. We could do a pillow with their signature on it and we embroider it right into it, their fingerprint and everything else. Uh, again, to what you were saying, that memory of aspect, you remember seeing dad in that, you know, lumberjack shirt, um, you know, if that pillow's sitting somewhere, you, that's, that memory is going to come back. So we're always looking at things like that um, to, uh, you know, to your point was they, to celebrate the celebration of it rather than just the missing them. So the happy thoughts are what we like to look at. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much for your time today, Steve. I really, really appreciate you hopping on. Uh, once again, I'm Mike Davis. And I'm Ashley Solomon. And this is Funeral DNA. Stay tuned next week where our podcast is going to analyze the unique components, trends, innovations, and services that make up the funeral industry, or as we call it, funeral DNA. Thank you.